All right then gang, so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the code that makes up this project right here and demo how it works in the browser. And that way, when I'm switching between components and adding animations in the future, you're gonna understand what parts of the app I'm working on. Now, if you wanna skip this and move straight on to animating, then feel free, you can go to the next lesson. But for the rest of us, first of all, let's run this in the browser. So the homepage is just a simple to-do list. We have two already there and we can add new ones if I type Type in here and press enter we can delete them and if I delete all of them we get a message right here saying woohoo nothing left to do and if I try to add a blank to do we get this error message at the top so first of all let's have a look at the code for this home page in the text editor so let's dive into the source folder then into views which is where all of our page components go so we have a different component for each page on the website so the home page right here this is what we see on the home page here and it's simple at first glance. We have this toast component, which is this notification at the top when we try to add in a bad to-do. And then also the to-dos themselves, which is this input field and the list. So let's dive into this thing first of all and take a look at that. And by the way, this thing, this is a custom event and we'll see more about that later on. This is what is fired when we try to add that bad to-do. But anyway, into the to-dos component, which is inside this folder, then to-dos. So. We have a div that surrounds the whole thing with a class of to-dos, then an input at the top, which is this thing. And what we're doing is giving this a V model and setting it equal to a ref called new to-do. And that is inside the setup function right here. And that's so we can track what a user is typing into it. So whatever we type into the input is being stored in the value of this ref. Then under that, we have this key press event and this modifier enter. And that means that whenever we press enter inside the input field, it's gonna fire this function add to do. Now that again is set up inside this setup function add to do. And what we do is see, does new to do have a value? Have they typed something into the input field first of all? If they have, then what we do is create a new ID by using math.random. Then we take the to-dos ref, which is storing the to-dos and each object is a to-do with text and ID. And we add that new to-do to the array. And then we assign that new array to to-dos.value. So every time they add a new item, it's been added to this ref right here. Okay, then after that, we reset new to-do back to be an empty string. And that's so that when we add a new to-do, this goes clear again, all right? Cool. Now, if we don't have a value, if a user presses enter and there's nothing in new to-do, we get this error right here. And that's because what we're doing here is saying, look, if we don't have a value, emit this custom event. And the reason we can use emit is that we've destructured it from the second argument, the context object inside setup and we emit this custom event, bad value. Now, if we take a look at the home page again, we can see that we listen for that custom event, and when it occurs, we fire this function, trigger toast, and that is down here. And what we do inside here is set the value of show toast, which is this ref, to be true. Now, when this value is true, the toast will show because we have this vIv attached to it, and it's only gonna show this if this is true. So when we try to add in a blank to do, it's gonna fire this event, it's gonna fire this function, it's gonna update this to true, and show that toast at the top, that error. And we also set a timeout so that we turn this back to false after three seconds. And that means after three seconds, it's gonna disappear again. So we see the error at the top for three seconds only. Okay, so that's how this works. And we'll see this component later on. Anyway, back in here, up here we check, do we have todos.length? Because we only want to output the todos if we have a length in this array. If the length is zero, it's not gonna output them and we output this instead where we say V else. But if we do have length, then we have a UL, and then we output an LI tag for each to-do. So we're cycling through the to-dos, which is this right here, and for each one we output an LI tag where the key is the to-do ID right here. And we also attach a click event to each one, which is gonna fire a function called delete to-do, and it passes in the ID of the to-do that we want to delete. So that function is down here, delete to do, we're taking the ID and all we're doing is updating that to do's value whereby we're filtering out the to do with the ID. So when we click it, it takes it out of the array, okay? Now inside the li tag, we just output the text of each to do. So that's pretty much it 
inside this component. Let's now have a look inside this toast component. Very simple. We just have a toast wrapper and then a toast itself and then a message and we style those down here. I'm not going to get into too much detail about how these styles work. Basically, we just give it some simple ones, position fixed, background color, etc, etc. And it shows up like this at the top. OK, cool. So that's the home page, but we also have two other pages, the about page right here, which is really simple, and also this contact page. So the about page is this component, dead simple, just an H1 and some paragraph tags and very simple styles. That's all there is to it. The contact page, a little bit more complex because we have icons. We have each of these things right here. Now, first of all, I'm loading in material icons to the index page right here using Google Fonts. So we have that library and when we have that library in order to output an icon, all we have to do is use a span with a class of material icons and then the name of the icon in that span. And when Google Fonts sees that, it's going to replace it with an icon. OK, so each icon has its own name and we have the icon stored inside this ref in the name property. So this is the name of the first icon. This is the name of the second. This is the name of the third and the fourth, etc. So when Google font sees those, it replaces it with these icons right here. We also have a text property for each one, which is the text we see underneath the icons. So all we're doing inside the template is cycling through these icons and we're outputting an li tag for each one, whereby the key is the icon name because it is unique for each case. And then in a div, we output the icon text. All right. Then we style these down here. We say the UL display as grid and the columns are one fraction to the left and one to the right, which is why we see two next to each other. And then a grid gap of 20 pixels, max width of 400 pixels, margin auto left and right, which is why it sits in the center of the page. And then each LI tag, we say list style type none, background white, yada, yada, yada. Very simple styles. Now, finally, I just want to go to the app.view because we have this nav that sits at the top of every page. This router view, this is where our page components are output. But this div with an ID of nav has three links to forward slash, forward slash about, and then forward slash contact. So that's these three things at the top. And I registered those routes inside the index router file right here. So that is about it. It's a very simple website, but enough of one to show you how to add some nice view transitions and animations. So let's get started in the next lesson by learning about the view transition component.